Welcome everybody to the School of Christian Mysticism Meditation Support Group. We've had a break of two weeks and this is our first time back together again and we decided before we had the break that we would have this support group on the theme of reunion because of course we are coming back together as a group today but also reunion in the contemplative context has a much deeper meaning in that we are seeking reunion with the source with god And no doubt, during this two weeks, everybody's been doing other things in the morning. And we might hear some more about that later when we enter into our time of discussion. But what I've been doing is, is reading Meister Eckhart's sermons. We've been making a lot of use of of poems based on Eckhart's writings, and I thought it would be good to read his original writings, albeit in translation, of course, because it's always or usually better to read the original words of the master rather than interpretations by others, however insightful they may be. And to start us off on our discussions today, I've selected just a couple of paragraphs from one of those sermons, which for me it at least relates to our theme because he's speaking about contemplative prayer in terms not just of reunion with God, but what happens after that, what's it for? Talking about prayer as a process really of moving in and moving out, of cycling, moving into reunion with God, moving out into the world that we necessarily live in and As he sees it, that echoes the Trinity itself. I won't go into that, but I'll go straight into the paragraphs that seem to be relevant. First of all, he says, Now, our good people imagine that they can reach a point where sensible things do not affect the senses. That cannot be. That a disagreeable noise should be as pleasant to my ear as the sweet tones of a lyre is something I shall never attain to. But this much can be attained that when it is observed with insight, a rational, God-conformed will submits to the insight and bids the will stand back from it, and the will answers, I will gladly. Lo and behold, then strife changes to joy. For what a man has gained by heavy toil brings him heart's delight, and then it bears fruit. We hear a lot these days about mindfulness, of standing back and looking at what's happening dispassionately and without judging. It seems to me that's what Eckhart is talking about here. 
And mindfulness, of course, is used in a secular setting to help people cope with the suffering and fear that they experience in daily life. But Eckhart's talking about much more here, not just about coping, but about complete transformation. He's saying, I think, that when we when our will is conformed to God, which is what we seek in contemplative prayer, when our will is conformed to God, there is a transformation so that suffering and fear turn into joy and hope. And he says it bears fruit. And what what are we to do with this? It's not not just a therapy that we can sit back and enjoy. And the next sentence, next paragraph, he says again, some people hope to reach a point where they are free of works. I say this cannot be. After the disciples had received the Holy Ghost, they began to do good works. And so, when Mary sat at the feet of our Lord, she was learning, or she had just gone to school to learn how to live. But later on, when Christ had gone to heaven and she received the Holy Ghost, she began to serve. She travelled overseas and preached and taught and served the other disciples. Only when the saints become saints do they do good works, for then they gather the treasure of eternal life. Of course, here I can't talking about the story of Mary and Martha, where Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and Martha was busying herself doing things for people. Normally taken as an example of how good contemplative prayer is in itself, but Eckhart turns this completely on its head and is suggesting really that it's Martha who is the enlightened one. And he of course, he's working on the assumption that the Mary who sat at the feet of Jesus is the same Mary. Mary Magdalene, who used later travelled and preached and taught. That was widely believed throughout most of Christianity, that the Marys were the same. But looking beyond that, the point he's making, of course, is that Contemplative prayer is like going to school. And when we start it, it's like going to kindergarten. We're learning. As he says, we're going to school to learn how to live. The whole point of it is to learn how to live in day-to-day -day life, not contemplative prayer just for the sake of it or because it makes us cope with life a bit better but it's there to enable us to live our life in the light of the Holy Spirit with our will conformed to God and our role then is to tell other people about it to bring other people along and that's the whole point of contemplative prayer, as he's suggesting, not as an end in itself, but as a means of conforming our will to that of God so that we can live our lives in joy and hope and tell other people about it so that they can come along to
So that's that's the offering. Thanks to Meister Eckhart and his insights on the theme of reunion, reunion with God, necessarily followed by reunion with our life in the world.